بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين My dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته And welcome to another episode of our lectures about the month of Ramadan the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Amongst the most important factors of the month of Ramadan is fasting. The fact that we refrain from certain items every day for 30 days from dawn till dusk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Holy Quran the fact that it is wajib to fast during the month of Ramadan. He says in the verse that we mentioned many times, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum as Allah says, O oh, you who believe, fasting has been prescribed upon you. It has been mandated, it's obligatory, it has been written and decreed. And hence, every Muslim must fast during the month of Ramadan, which is the ninth month of the Islamic lunar calendar. They must fast for 30 or 29 days, however long, based on the moon. They have to fast for 29 or 30 days every day, from Fajr, which is dawn, Fajr al-Sadiq, which is the time to pray Salat al-Fajr, until Salat al-Maghrib. And when Salat al-Maghrib begins, this is when I may break my fast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in another verse, He says, شَهْرُ Ramadan الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ He speaks about the month of Ramadan, and then He says, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْهُ And whoever is alive, and the conditions of fasting, are met, which I will mention inshallah, then you have to fast during the month of Ramadan. It is wajib according to all Muslims mentioned in the Holy Quran. Now, since fasting is wajib, my dear brothers and sisters, we have to make sure that we fast correctly. Anytime Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks anything from us, salah, som, hijab, going to hajj, paying khumus, I have to make sure that I do all of my ibadat and all of that correctly. I have to make sure it's valid because there are strict guidelines and rules to all the ahkam. Just like the law has strict guidelines, you want to pay your taxes, you have to do it exactly like this and that and find the consultant. If you want to take your uh, children to school, you have to fill so many forms. The law is so complicated, you have to follow this law and that law. You want to buy a house, you have to follow so many rules. The laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise have rules and guidelines. And if I don't stick to those rules, Allah won't accept my a'mal. And hence I have to make sure my siyam, my fasting is perfect. And how do I do that? I educate myself about siyam. I see what Allah has told me about fasting during... In the Quran, I see what Ahlul Bayt, Rasulullah, have told me about fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah, the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, they have given us laws of fasting. And I have to abide by those laws. And hence, my dear brothers and sisters, inshallah, briefly in the next 15 20 minutes, we shall mention some of the basic and general laws of fasting. And I encourage you, even yet, even then, to go and review the book of Ahkam of Siyam because there are so many Ahkam. And we cannot mention all of them in this segment, in this episode, but we just mention the main ones. Either go back to Minhaj al-Salihin or Al-Masail al-Islamiyya, and it's all translated in English now, it's all on the internet now, and just read the Ahkam of Siyam, see what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do, and so on and so forth. So the first of all, when we begin about fasting, the first question that rises, who must fast? Is it everyone, or are there conditions? Four conditions, my dear brothers and sisters. Number one, for anyone to fast, they have to be mature. And when we say mature, for girls it means nine years old. Nine years old, and that's in the Islamic lunar calendar. So nine years of 355 days, not 365 days. And that would make it, uh, for example, in the solar years, that would make eight years and probably 10 months or whatever, maybe uh, seven months. So when the girl turns nine years, she is now considered as mature, balig, sin taklif And now she has to do all the wajibat, and she has to refrain all the muharamat. So this is the age that the law of Allah considers that person punishable by law. Just like in some countries it's 18 and you're an adult. In Islam for girls it's nine, and for boys, it's one of two things, either the age of maturity, whenever they pass puberty, and that may be for some at the age of 12, for others 13, for some 14, and if not, they don't pass puberty, it's the age of 15 in the solar calendar. So for girls in general, 9, and boys in general, 
the age of 15 years old. So that's number one. Number two, fasting must not harm me. If fasting harms me, then I do not have to fast. And in fact, it is haram for me to fast, fast if it harms me. And that's one of two things. Either I'm sick, I'm really sick, and fasting, not eating for 12 hours will harm my health uh, uh, greatly. Or for example, it won't, not because not eating will harm me, but because I have to take a medicine. And obviously taking a medicine is either the drinking or eating it. And I can't eat or drink anything during the month of Ramadan. So if I'm sick and I have to take a medicine, fasting will, uh, will, will prevent me from being cured. And hence I do not fast then, I make it up after the month of Ramadan. Or number two for old people. An elderly person, an old man or woman cannot fast because they're, they're too weak. And hence for such people, most ulama, they say that since obviously they're not going to get better, they're just going to get worse, they're growing old, it's not a sickness, they will never be able to make it up after. They don't have to fast. And what they do instead is they pay a kafara, a charity, every day for every day that they don't fast, three-fourths, of a kilogram, 750 grams of food, of rice, wheat, whatever. So it's almost like saying two pounds. Two pounds of rice or whatever for every day. So 60 days, for example, that's times 60 times 750 grams, whatever that becomes. 45, uh, for example, kilograms, they have to pay as a charity for their siyam. That's number two, fasting must not harm me. Number three, and this pertains to the woman, to the females, they must not be in their hayl, which is the menstrual cycle. If they are in their period, in their menstrual cycle, they cannot fast. For seven, six, uh, eight, ten, whatever their cycle is, they are not allowed to fast. It is haram to fast if they are in the hayl. They make it up after the month of Ramadan. And number four, I must not be traveling. If I am traveling, then I cannot fast. So for example, I live in the city of Karbala, for example, and I want to go to Najaf two, three days. Then I cannot fast those two days while I am in Najaf. I have to be in my hometown or wherever I live. Except, my dear brothers and sisters, except in those travels in which my salah is still tamam. Whenever your salah is tamam, that means you pray, pray it full, then you are allowed to fast in general. There are a few exceptions. But in general, whenever your salah is tamam, then you're allowed to fast. And whenever your salah is qasr, you are not allowed to fast. So for example, if I'm traveling to a place and I'll be staying there for 10 or more days, my salah will be tamam, right? If it's 9 or less days, less than 10 days, my salah is qasr. I can't fast. But if it's 10 or more days, my salah is tamam, then I have to fast. Or for example, I am visiting my hometown. Let's say I live in a city, I'm studying there. During the month of Ramadan, I want to go for three days to my hometown. That's where I grew up, that's where I was born, that's where I lived, and that's where my family members and my parents live. That hometown, which is called Al-Watan, and that place, obviously, even if I go there for one day or two days, I still have to fast over there because my salah is tamam. So wherever my salah is tamam, then I fast. And when, wherever it's qasr, I do not fast. So this is the fourth criteria. I should not be traveling a travel which prohibits me from fasting. And we said how to know that? We see if my salah is qasr, then I don't fast. I can't fast. And if my salah is tamam, then I fast in general. Now, when we say, my dear brothers and sisters, as I mentioned, that if I am fasting, I do not have to fast. It's not that I just don't have to fast. It's not optional. I cannot fast. It is haram to fast while I'm traveling. That means if I fast, Allah won't accept it. Some other Muslims, they believe, that, that some other schools of thought, they believe that it's optional. If you travel, you can fast or not fast. If you fasted, fine. If you didn't, you make it up after. The school of thought of Ahlul Bayt believes, according to the Imams, that we cannot fast. We are not allowed to fast. And this is called Azima, while the optional is called Rukhsa. Azima is something that you should not do and you cannot do. Just like the woman in her period, just like if I am harmed, all these areas. That if I am harmed by fasting, then I must not fast. It is haram for me to fast. Obviously, if, if it's for a condition, if a child is not mature, no, it's mustahab for them to fast. But the other criteria, if they are not met, it becomes haram to fast. Now, during the month of Ramadan, as we said, we have to fast throughout the whole month. And how? How do I do that? Well, first of all, how to fast? 
First of all, I have to intend on fasting. If I don't make the intention, Allah won't count it for me because who says you're doing it for Allah? So intend it for Allah. You don't have to say anything, just intend it in your mind that I'm doing this for Allah. I'm not doing it to lose weight. I'm not doing it because my parents forced me or whatever. I'm doing it just for Allah because He said so. And hence, I can do it two ways. Either every night I say, oh Allah, I intend on fasting tomorrow or the first Night before Ramadan begins, I say, oh Allah, I will fast throughout the month of Ramadan and I have to keep on mentioning that every single night. And I don't even have to say it, I just have to intend it that I know that I'm fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now my dear brothers and sisters, we move on to the actions that invalidate a Muslim's fast. So when I fast, what do I have to do? Or on more uh, specific, what can't I do? Well, there are 10 things, my dear brothers and sisters, that we are not allowed to do while we are fasting. Number one and number two, obviously, are eating and drinking. I am not allowed to eat any food or drink anything while I am fa fasting. Obviously, intentionally. I shall, I shall mention that uh, in, in, a, in, in a few minutes. That if accidentally I eat or drink, it's okay. I forget that I'm fasting. And that happens many times, you know to many of us that we forget we're fasting, especially the first days of Ramadan because we're not used to fasting. I wake up, I forget that I'm fasting, I go, I eat, I open the fridge, I eat a nice meal, I drink, and then all of a sudden I remember I was fasting. Does that invalidate my fast? No, because I didn't do it on purpose. If it's intentionally, that's what invalidates my fast. If it's accidentally, it's okay. In fact, we have a hadith, the Imam, he says, it's, if, if that happens, if you forget and eat, it's okay, and it's as if it's a gift from Allah. So we, some people, they say, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to always make me forget and eat. Allah, the Imam says, Rizqun saqahu Allah It's a gift from Allah that you know you forgot and you ate and you're fasting and Allah will still count the fast for you. So number one, number two, eating and drinking. Number three is sexual intercourse with a spouse. This is haram during the day while I am fasting. Number four is masturbation. This also invalidates the fast. Number five, ascribing lies to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the Prophet or the Imams. If I say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deems this as halal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deems this as haram, and I am lying, I'm not sure of that, I have broken my fast. Or I say Rasulullah did this, he said that, and I'm lying. Or the Imam did this or did that, or the Imam said do this or do that, and I am lying. Anytime I ascribe a lie, I say something about God or the Imams and it's a lie, then I have broken my fast. So we have to be extra careful not to give our own views about faith during Ramadan because it might be a lie and I might break my fast because of that. That's number five. Number six, inhaling thick dust. It's haram and that will break my fast smoking probably goes under that. You're not allowed to smoke according to most maraja, most ulama. While we are fasting, we're not allowed to smoke. Number seven, staying at, in the state of janaba or hayd until fajr on purpose, intentionally. That will break my fast. For example, it's 10 p.m. and I enter the state of janaba for whatever reason, either through a haram action, may God forbid zina, masturbation or from halal with a spouse, intercourse with a spouse and I become mujnib. Obviously after intercourse, after the semen comes out of my body or after intercourse, I have to perform ghusl al -janaba. And if I don't, I will stay mujnib. I'm not allowed to pray, I'm not allowed to fast. So if I don't perform ghusl on purpose until fajr comes, then I can't fast, I have invalidated my fast. Or if a woman is in her period and let's say at 9, 10, 11, 12, 1 p.m., uh, uh, 12, uh, 11 p.m., 12, 1 a.m., she becomes pure. She has to do ghusl al hayth she has to take that shower of al hayth If she doesn't on purpose until Fajr comes, then that woman cannot fast on that day. It is haram and that woman will have to make that up. That lady will have to make that up after. That sister will have to make it up. So that's number seven. Number eight, vomiting intentionally. If it's accidentally, it's okay. But if I vomit intentionally, I uh, make myself vomit, then I have broken my fast. Number nine, applying liquid enema from the rear. This um, breaks my fast. Even if it's for treatment, it will break my fast. If it's for treatment, it's okay. It's not a sin, but it breaks my fast. I have to redo it after the month of Ramadan. And number 10, finally, immersing the entire head in the water. 
For example, there's a pool and I put my head in that water, I dive in the pool and all of my head is under the water, I have broken my fast. Now I could take a shower. Taking a shower is okay because it's not immersing the head in the water, it's just water falling on me. That's okay. But immersing my head in the water, that's not allowed. Now this is according to most ulama. Sayyid al-Sistani, he believes that immersing the head in the water does not invalidate the fast. It is rather makruh, it's unrecommended, but it does not validate the fast. But most other maraja believe that this invalidates the fast. And even for the followers of Sayyid Sistani, it is urged and recommended for them to refrain from swimming and emerging, immersing their head inside a pool or inside the water during the month of Ramadan. And as I mentioned, my dear brothers and sisters, these 10 mufattirat, as they call the invalidators of fast, they only invalidate my fast if I do them on purpose. If I forget and any of them happens, then it is perfectly fine. I have not invalidated my fast if I eat or drink or I smoke or whatever of these things. I immerse my head, I vomit accidentally. Or I stay in the state of dramat accidentally, I don't know then that is fine. It does not break my fast. It only breaks my fast when it becomes intentionally. Now, we said that if I do not adhere to these laws, I will break my fast. If I eat or drink or whatever of these things, I will break my fast. So, if I invalidate my fast and I break it intentionally, what happens? What do I have to do now? Here, three things apply, my dear brothers and sisters. Number one, I, I have to stay fasting that day. So despite the fact that I have broken my fast, don't think that's it, just because you broke it, go and eat as much as you want and drink after that. No, I have to stay fasting. It's a sort of punishment. You broke your fast, it won't be counted, and yet you still have to refrain from eating or drinking that if you went and ate again, it's another sin. So number one, I have to still refrain from eating. Don't say, oh, just because I broke it, that's it, it's broken, let me go and eat. No, even if you broke it intentionally, stay fasting, but it won't count for you. And if you don't, Allah will punish you. That's number one. Number two, I have to make up that day later after Ramadan, any day I have to fast. And number three, if it's intentionally, I have to pay a kafara. I have to pay a kafara. Now what is the kafara? The kafara, my dear brothers and sisters, is one of three things. It's either I could feed 60 people, 60 poor I find and I feed them a meal, or whatever, however that much may cost in my country or wherever country that I live in, I have to feed 60 people for every day that I break my fast intentionally. Or I could fast if I don't have money, for example, I could fast for two months, 60 consecutive days, for 31 days, they have to be consecutive, and then after 31, I could split it up. But in the end, I have to fast for 60 days, twice as much as Ramadan, if I don't want to pay. Or number three, which we can't do, is free a slave. And this was back then, when everyone had a slave. Allah wants to encourage people to free the slaves. Obviously, we don't have slaves today, so it's either feed 60 of the poor, or fast two consecutive months. So this, my dear brothers and sisters, is kafarat iftar shahar Ramadan muta'amid and anyone that breaks their fast during the month of Ramadan on purpose, then this is the kafara that they have to pay. Now, if I invalidate my fast on something that is haram in essence, for if I drink water on purpose, drinking water is not haram. Only in Ramadan it becomes haram because it invalidates my fast. But in essence, drinking water obviously is not haram. However, what happens if I invalidate my fast on something haram? I go and not just drink, I drink alcohol, may God forbid, which is haram even outside the month of Ramadan. Here, according to most ulama, it becomes more severe that I do not choose one of the three kafarat, feed 60 or uh, um, free a slave or past two consecutive months. I have to do all three of them. Today there's no slave, so I have to do two of them. I have to feed 60 people and I have to fast two consecutive months as a punishment because not only did I break my fast, but I broke it on something that is haram in essence. I drank alcohol, I performed zina for example, may God forbid. And hence the punishment becomes more severe. According to most ulama, some ulama they say no, it's mustahab to do the three, you still have to pay one, but most ulama they say you have to pay the all of the kafarat, you have to perform all of the kafarat in order for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to forgive you. So my dear brothers and sisters, these were some of the basic ahkam of fasting. 
during the month of Ramadan. These are just the general, the brief ahkam of fasting. There are so many other ahkam. I urge and encourage all of you to read the book of ahkam. How long would it take you? Uh, maximum one hour. Just take a, a few minutes before the month of Ramadan approaches and read about the ahkam of Ramadan. If you read Arabic, there are so many books. If you can't, no matter what your language is, my dear brothers and sisters, with the internet, nowadays we have no excuse. Maybe a hundred years ago, yes, I'm living in a village, in a town, there's no books, no this. But today, everyone has internet. And ev it's, the world is a village now. And I cannot say I don't have resources, I don't have this. Just go on Google and type what are the things that invalidate the uh, fast according to the Shia sc school of thought? And you'll find hundreds of websites. All right, what is this marja? Write his name, think about this. Or what is his view and fatwa about this mas'ala? And you'll find so many websites about that, clarifying it in English, in Arabic, in Farsi, in Urdu, in all languages, my dear brothers and sisters. So this is not an excuse. We have to make sure that we abide by the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our master and we have to make sure that we know our ahkam 100%. And don't say, oh, who cares? God doesn't care. Yo, God cares. Just like the law cares. If you file for taxes and one line you leave blank, they won't accept it. One line you, of a form you leave blank for applying a job, they won't accept it. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have to be so lenient in your eyes when everyone else is not lenient? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to abide by the law, follow His laws. When Rasulullah says, fast like this and this invalidates if it's like this or like that, pay this kafara, that kafara. He wants us to abide by that and follow the commandments of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we have to make sure that all our ibadat, all our a'mal are perfect and hence not just with siyam, with salah, with hajj, with everything I have to make sure all my a'mal are 100% accurate and they are just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Ahlul Bayt alayhim salatu salam ordered us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all and to give us the tawfiq, the energy to perform fasting in the correct way, in the way that He wants it, not in the way that I want it, not in the way that I like, but in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us <coughs> if we do not, if we were ignorant of some masail, if we committed some mistakes while we were fasting, oh Allah, forgive us and accept our a'mal, accept our fasting during the month of Ramadan and give us the tawfiq to all the time, throughout the year, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to seek nearness to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin.